Hello and welcome to this tutorial on membrane hydrophones. As with other tutorials in the hydrophone series, we begin by recapping the definition of a hydrophone. This is the device designed with the sole intent of receiving ultrasonic signals underwater. And we contrast this with a transducer, which is a device which has some ultrasound generation capability. As membrane hydrophones are piezoelectric devices, we'll also recall the piezoelectric effect. If we have a transducer, a source of ultrasound, and a sensor material that is connected to some display of voltage, we note that when the transducer is radiating acoustic signals, the pressure generated by the transducer causes the sensor material to contract or expand. This in turn leads to a changing voltage. This is the piezoelectric effect. The construction of a membrane hydrophone is conceptually simple. There's a PVDF membrane, which is held taut over a mounting ring. Let's look in detail at that PVDF membrane, and we will see that there are gold electrodes top and bottom. But there is a selective region where those electrodes overlap, and by selectively polarizing that region only, we can form a piezoelectric element which is defined by the overlap region of those two gold electrodes. Here are some examples of membrane hydrophones, and we can see that they're available with 0.4 or 0.2 millimeter diameter active elements, and on films of thickness of either 16 microns or 12 microns. Membrane hydrophones are normally used as part of a preamplified system, and here we can see an image of a full hydrophone system that is a conventional preamplifier. Or to the right, an image of a differential membrane hydrophone. The typical frequency response of a membrane hydrophone, so that's its sensitivity variation as a function of frequency, is shown on screen. We notice that low frequencies, there's a very smoothly varying area, the plateau region. And beyond the peak, we find that there's a high frequency roll off. Critically, the frequency at which that peak occurs depends upon the thickness of the PVDF membrane. If we move to thinner films, we find that that thickness resonance increases in frequency. This also results in a stretching of the plateau and the high frequency roll off regions. So here we see that there is an inversely proportional relationship between resonance frequency and film thickness. Now let's consider some of the wave modes propagating within a hydrophone. We'll begin by considering normal incidence. And we note that if we have an incident wave arriving at the PVDF water interface, there'll be some reflection and some transmission. The partially transmitted wave will also go through to the rear surface, the PVDF water interface, where it will undergo partial reflection and partial transmission again. And we can find we get internal reflections propagating within the membrane itself that gives rise to a half wave resonance. It's this half wave resonance that caused the peak in the frequency response we saw in previous slides. Now let's look and see what happens when we are at oblique incidence. And here we'll consider incident signals that are arriving at the critical angle, which is determined from the relative wave speeds of PVDF and water. In this case, we can get a LAM wave propagating inside the PVDF, which will eventually encounter the mounting ring. And it's this effect which impacts the directional response that we will look at for membrane hydrophones in later slides. Now let's consider some performance metrics for typical conventionally preamplified membrane hydrophones. We'll notice we have both 0.4 and 0.2 millimeter diameter active elements on 16 and 12 micron films. As discussed previously, the thinner film has a higher thickness frequency resonance. Notice here that the sensitivity decreases as we move down the table. This is because the charge generating volume of the active element depends both upon the hydrophone active element diameter and the thickness of the film. Reducing either of these two reduces the charge generating volume of PVDF and consequently reduces the sensitivity. 
Here we look at a similar table for differentially preamplified devices. And whilst the trends are similar, we notice that the sensitivities are substantially higher, typically an order of magnitude so. This is because we're able to exploit common mode rejection in a differential amplifier and can get much more gain into the signal. Now let's look at compensating for the frequency response of our hydrophone. If all of the energy within our acoustic signal being measured is within the plateau region of the frequency response of the hydrophone, then it's appropriate that we can use the narrowband approximation. If, however, we've got spectral content outside of this narrow plateau region, we'll have to consider using full hydrophone deconvolution. And if these terms aren't immediately familiar to you, I would recommend looking at our tutorial called Converting Hydrophone Output Pressure to Voltage, and that's also available on the Precision Acoustics YouTube channel or on our website. Now let's talk about the directional response of a membrane hydrophone. You'll notice at low frequencies, we have got some very unusual behaviour at angles beyond about 37 degrees. These are the LAM wave artefacts that we discussed in conjunction with non-normal incidence. 37 degrees is critical here because that's the critical angle at the water PVDF interface. And for further information on hydrophone directivity and spatial averaging, there's also a tutorial video available via our YouTube channel or website. Typically, membrane hydrophones are used for field mapping of transducers, often within an open tank. Here we can see we've got a, an image of a diagnostic ultrasound array, in front of which we can define a grid of measurement locations, and we can then quite happily scan our hydrophone in an appropriate mount around inside that. Typical applications for membrane hydrophones are looking exactly at the output of diagnostic medical equipment. They're particularly useful for this because these pulses are very short with very broad spectral content. Here you can see that we've got substantial spectral information out to 20, 30 and even 40 megahertz. And for this, a very broad band hydrophone response is needed. As we saw previously, the thickness resonance of even 16 micron films occurs at 63 megahertz, so the spectral content of this particular signal is well within the available bandwidth for a membrane hydrophone. So to summarise then, membrane hydrophones are the gold standard hydrophones for broadband measurements. They have bandwidths of up to 130 megahertz, so this is well beyond the thickness peak, but still gives very measurable sensitivity. And they have a plateau region which can be 30 to 50 megahertz wide. However, it's important to ensure that they're used at angles of incidence less than 35 degrees, especially at low frequencies, to avoid the LAM wave artifact. We hope you found this tutorial video interesting. If you did, come back and find some more of the PA tutorial videos.